What is a short squeeze? If you're just getting started and new to the stock market, maybe you've heard of short squeezes. In fact, up on the screen right now, I'll put a headline where it shows how Tesla shorts have lost, well, a lot of money as you see there. So, but what exactly is going on? What's causing the short squeeze? How does a short squeeze actually work? To best explain this, we gotta set some ground frames here, some, not ground frames, some foundations here that will help us kind of launch from what's going on. So, and I'm not trying to insult anybody's intelligence, but like I said, we need to start with just some basics here so that you can understand all the dynamics that come together for almost a perfect storm that caused the short squeeze. So in the market, we have people known as buyers, right? And these people, well, they wanna buy a stock. So for example, we'll just use Tesla. They wanna buy Tesla. So that's the, the foundation. Yes, there's buyers in the market. And when a lot of people buy a stock, well, that, it causes it to go up. Okay, so that's just foundation. Lots of buyers in the market. When people buy, stocks will go up. And then there's another group of people out there that they say, you know, well, let me take a step back. Why would people buy? Well, people buy because they think a stock is gonna go up. People buy because they think Tesla is going to go up. But there's another group of people out there. So right here, we'll put buyers buy because they think that the price is gonna go up, represented there by the green arrow. You have another group of people out there that are known as the shorts. Now, the shorts believe this. They believe the price is gonna go down. Now, part of shorting and how you can make money on shorts, in fact, if you're like, wait, what? Make money when prices go down? What are you even talking about? I've never even heard of the word shorts before. I'd encourage you to hit the pause button here and I'll put a link down below to a video where um, you know I talk more about shorting. And I'll also actually put in a, a link to a video below where I, I short a stock. And although it wasn't intended when I did the live recording, it was kind of almost like a, a short squeeze in a sense, but it wasn't really one, but it kind of felt like one as, as you'll see when you go to that video. So I'll put those links down below. But if you're like, no, no, okay, I, I know what shorting is. And I know it is, you know, I know that you can make money when prices go down, but I'm still not quite sure on a short squeeze. Perfect. That's who this video is intended for. But like I said, shorts are thinking, well, the price is going to go down and you can make money on that. But the key with that is shorts actually sell first. And then when they're ready to exit the position, you know, get out of the position, they need to buy. So what's going on is when shorts enter into the trade, what happens in that situation? Will they automatically become buyers? How so? Again, I'll reiterate. A short sells first, but then in order for them to make money, in order for them to exit out of the trade, they need to buy. So you have shorts that turn themselves into buyers. Now at some point, you know, not right away, but at some point they're gonna have to buy. So what does that actually do? Well, that creates what? more buyers out there. Now let's go over to Tesla, for example. And we have Tesla stock here. And the stock price starts to go up. Now for shorts, they make money when prices go down. So the flip side of that, well, okay, how do they lose money? Well, prices go up. So when prices start to go up, the shorts, they start to feel nervous. Uh oh, I'm losing money right now. I'm losing money. But who else likes to see when prices go up? Well, buyers do, right? Because buyers are thinking, oh wow, that stock's going up. Oh wow, Tesla's going up. You know, I would like to make money. I should probably buy. So they see, they being buyers, normal people seeing the price going up. Well, what do they wanna do? Well, they're gonna buy. So what does that do? Well, now we have more people entering the equation, right? You have just the normal buyers, people that think, I wanna make money because I think Tesla is gonna go up even higher. So think about it. Well, now we have more people buying because they think the price is gonna go up. So, well, yeah, the price goes up even more. So what happens to the shorts? Oh, oh man, now, now I'm losing that much more money. Now I'm losing that much, oh, this is, this is not good, this does not feel good, the price keeps going up. But what's happening from this people's perspective? 
oh wow, Tesla is still going up. Wow, I can't believe my buddy, he bought a while ago and he's making money now. You know what, I should probably just buy. Oh, okay. So now we have even more buyers that showed up. More buyers. Well, when more buyers show up, what's that gonna do to the price? Well, that's gonna send the price even higher. And now all of a sudden we have a situation where the shorts are like, okay, well, I, I, I have to sell. And I'm not gonna get into margin calls, there's other videos on that. But basically a margin call is where your broker says, hey, you were way wrong. This loss is getting out of control. You need to exit the position. Exit the position. Do, do you remember from the beginning of the video? How does a short exit the position? Well, they have to what? They have to buy. So now the shorts need to start to exit the position. In other words, they need to buy, which does what? Well, now you have all these short-sided people that went short they are now having to join all the buyers to buy. Now you have even more people buying. And keep in mind, this went up again. So you have the normal buyers saying, oh wow, you know, Jimmy and Billy and Robert, they all bought and now they're making money on Tesla. I should probably buy. So you have that dynamic still going on, which is again, adding even more buyers. So you have even more buyers going on and Tesla's going up. At that point, you see what's going on here? Holy smokes, there's even more shorts that are saying, I, I gotta get out of this thing. I am getting squeezed. I, I, the, everything is lining up against me. You have normal buyers, you have other shorts trying to exit the trade, which is buying. So then, oh, I, I gotta get out now. So now all of a sudden, you have even more buyers showing up. And these buyers are just part of the shorts. And then of course, from this point of view, the normal people are like, oh, I can't believe Tesla's still going up. Billy, Robert, John, Susie, Sally, they all, they're all making money because they bought a long time ago. I better buy. So now they're buying. And there's even more buyers coming into the equation. So what is that gonna do to Tesla? Even more. And then this process repeats itself over and over and over again. The shorts are just simply fueling the already hyped up fire that in this situation, Tesla was. And, th and that's why they make the comment, wow, shorts got roasted. Shorts got squeezed because the squeezing part is in the sense of they got to exit the trade, but they're trying to exit in an environment where there's all sorts of people buying. Because not only are there other shorts buying, you have just the normal people out there buying because they just think that they're gonna make money when the prices go up. So it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy, if you will, of just momentum that's going against everybody because you have so many buyers involved. And this is why, and this is kind of a side note, but when people are like, well, shorting is evil. You know, shorts, that, that shouldn't be allowed. No, why, why not? Shorting definitely should be allowed. Why? Because if a company does its job, if a company can prove its value, then all a short is doing is helping the stock in this manner because a short automatically becomes a guaranteed buyer. And then, like I said, if the company does its job and is not a piece of garbage, well, then eventually those shorts are gonna have to buy. And when you get the right recipe in place, you can get a short squeeze and this is how it all works. So my question to you down in the comment section, do you remember Tesla when this was all going on? That headline I showed, uh, did, you, did you trade it at all? I mean, I was part of it. Not, luckily, I was not one of the ones getting squeezed. I was just trading it generally, but it was a crazy, crazy time. And you know, short squeezes, they don't, they don't happen all the time, but when they happen, they can happen big and uh, you can get some very explosive movements. But have you ever, were you part of Tesla? Or another question, have you ever been a part of any other short squeezes? Uh, let me know down in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and let me know if you want me to keep making these by, like I said, hitting that like button or just letting me know down in the comment section. And also, hopefully you decide to check out the rest of the channel. Lots of other content. There's live trade videos, all sorts of stuff. So check that out and hopefully you decide, you know what, that's worthwhile enough. I'm gonna hit the subscribe button because I'd love to have you as part of the channel. So thank you for hanging out. Hit that like button and I'll see you back in the next video. 
First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm gonna to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too good, way too, good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.